Good evening, and welcome to Alden High School, or welcome back, whatever the case may be. My name is Kevin Ryan. For the past 17 years, it has been my pleasure to serve this community as the high school principal. Joining me on stage here this evening is my partner, Mr. Bill McCowan. Bill has served as the assistant principal here for the same period of time, following his eight-year stint as a physical education teacher and coach in the high school. As representatives of the Alden Administrators Association, it is our pleasure to host the program this evening. At this time, I would ask you to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Good evening. Over three years ago, Mr. Ryan and I, with the support of our superintendent, Mr. Stoltman, embarked on this journey to honor distinguished alumni from this great community. It has been a learning process for both of us, for sure. But what a wonderful, but what a wonderful one at that. In a very short period of time, we have already met so many amazing people that represent the history and fabric of this fantastic community. After studying what other school districts have done with their distinguished alumni, we established this award to be given biannually every other year opposite the Athletic Wall of Fame inductions. Tonight, we will honor our second class of inductees, the lives and accomplishments of three incredible human beings from Alden, New York. To commence with the induction of our first honoree tonight, please turn your attention to the video screen. Dr. Dana Rao Weimer is a 1985 graduate from Alden High School, during which time she was active in student government, varsity chorale, yearbook, and musicals. She graduated from the University at Buffalo with a bachelor's degree in architecture and master's in engineering. She worked in engineering for 12 years before pursuing her medical degree. She is the managing physician partner of Quaker Medical Associates in Orchard Park, New York. A patient of mine recently said to me something that's kind of stuck with me. He said, life is not a dress rehearsal. Don't let the fear of the unknown paralyze you in your own life. I stand before you a physician, double boarded in internal medicine and pediatrics. I have a rewarding career, a loving and supportive husband, a son whom I'm very proud of. But 36 years ago, when I was sitting where you're sitting right now, a career in medicine wasn't my dream. You know, I managed numerous construction projects through the years. We worked on water systems in Western New York. Uh, we did the U.S. embassies all over the world. We designed the largest incinerator in Istanbul, Turkey. But it wasn't enough. I, I, I knew I wasn't satisfied. I remember my boss saying to me, what did you think you were gonna do in engineering? Find the cure for cancer? Today's the first time in 36 years I've been on this football field. It's a little different. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Ray Trika, who's here today, from our Wax News crew uh, for putting that video tribute together. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for your hard work. 
as part of our Wax News crew. At this time, to present Dr. Weimer for induction, please welcome to the podium former Alden High School art teacher, Mrs. Judith Kaczynski. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Ray. That was a terrific video that you put together honoring Dr. Weimer. It gives me just really the best pleasure to introduce Dr. Dana Rao Weimer to you tonight and tell you a little bit about this very distinguished alumna of Alden Schools. I first met Dr. Weimer when I became her patient several years back. <laughs> Upon that first meeting, I could see immediately that she was bright, compassionate, quick thinking, and a good problem solver. I should have known then, right, that she was from Alden, right? <laughs> I should have known. But it actually took us a while until we found our common past and figured out that she had graduated from the same place I loved teaching at for 24 years, Alden High School. We share the blue and gold. It runs in our bloodstreams, right? <laughs> Dana has been the primary care physician for myself and my family for many years. I'd like to just kind of highlight, I know the video covered a bit, but I'd like to highlight the interesting path that brought her to the role that she currently has as partner and physician with Quaker Medical Associates. After her commencement here, she graduated from the University of Buffalo with a bachelor's degree in architecture, worked for a bit, and then went back and got, earned her master's in engineering. She worked in engineering for 12 years before pursuing her medical degree. She graduated from Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine and completed her residency in combined internal medicine and pediatrics through Buffalo General Hospital, Children's Hospital, and ECMC. In her fourth year, she served as chief resident. She was active in the National Med Peds Resident Association, during which she was instrumental in organizing and bringing the Northeast Conference to Buffalo for the first time ever. She is a member of the American College of Physicians and the American Academy of Pediatrics. She serves on the boards of both the Optimum Physicians Alliance and the Primary Care Independent Physicians Association, which serve to promote quality in primary care. She has been married for over 30 years to her husband, Michael, and is a proud mom to her son, Riley. All of that is very impressive, right? But wait, <laughs> if we read between the lines for a minute and think about it, she was an architect, an engineer, a mother, and then a physician. She started medical school when her son started kindergarten. <laughs> I don't know, are there any other parents out there besides me who suddenly feel very lazy and underachieving? That's impressive. Dana worked hard. She listened to her inner callings and kept pushing when it felt like her first careers weren't enough, were not the fit she was made for. It is in this work, as a physician, that she has found both her truest calling and deep career satisfaction knowing that she is using her gifts, her intellect, her strong skills to help others. She has found her best life and her own best way to better our world. We thank her for that, and we thank her for bringing back to our community the very skills that found their roots here in Alden. At graduation this past June, when she spoke with our students, she urged our graduates to do what she found herself doing. Shift when needed. Listen to where your skills point you. Follow your passion and work to find your best self. I have to tell you, this is a woman, in my opinion, who does not know how to say no to life's possibilities or its challenges. To anyone she meets, every patient she sees, the seemingly impossible is met with why not, or how can we, or let's try this. Thoughts of no, uh-uh, can't do, not gonna happen, it's just not in her option pool. 
I'm glad to be her patient because of that. I'm glad she's helping so many others with that same can-do spirit. I recently talked with some of Dr. Weimer's partners at the medical office to get their perspective on her and her work. These are the words that immediately came to mind when they think of Dana Weimer. Compassionate, committed, family-centered, a strong and wonderful sense of empathy, brave, ethical, a keen sense of humor, exceedingly hardworking, always encouraging to others, persevering, brilliant, and tenacious. They also spoke very poignantly of Dr. Weimer's caring, of her reaching out, especially when one of their staff was facing a serious medical crisis. She reached out to say and to demonstrate over and over in many ways, you are not alone. That is her working philosophy in this field where she sees patients daily dealing with really tough stuff. No one goes it alone. She is there to help. As her patient myself, when she chides me for a rise in my cholesterol <laughs> or for my love of carbs, Dr. Weimer has a great way of being practical, telling it like it is while also recognizing my humanness and the failings that make working toward better health every day in every way for most of us not the norm. She is practical and, personally and personal. She delightfully accepts our failings while always wanting and believing we can do more, we can do better. When I faced a serious medical issue myself, Dr. Weimer was all in, calling me on the weekend, following up with every detail of my care all the way. She is committed to doing the very best for her patients and for our community in general, always. As I as I have reviewed along with you Dr. Weimer's educational and career path, I can't help but notice and think an engineer, an architect, a doctor. I kind of see a theme there. She is someone who has always wanted to, to understand, right? To, to just to get it, to understand how things work, to understand how to build on what is, to understand what can make something better, how to fix something. It's the same process, right? Just different subjects. <laughs> I'm so glad she shifted her skills to medicine, glad she used her skills to design and help build useful and beautiful things in our world, for sure, but I'm gladder still that she pivoted and decided to use her skills to build better and healthier humans. When I asked Dr. Weimer for her best memories of Alden High School, she spoke of this, this time right now, this time of homecoming, her remembrances of celebrating with pep rallies and football games and sharing in all kinds of fun ways to honor how Alden as a school brings us together. All that Alden is and all that it gives us as students, teachers, parents, and now alumni. While I did not teach Dr. Weimer here myself at Alden, I thank my colleagues that did, and I salute their skills and their success in helping shape this quite remarkable woman. As teachers, we can hope for nothing more, that our own life work leads to good things in others. Alden schools had a hand in laying the foundation for Dr. Weimer's life-giving career, but I suspect more of the credit goes to her family we thank them with her. In closing, lest we think that Dr. Weimer was always just a serious professional, I'd like to take you back a bit to her senior yearbook, where Rowdy, as she was nicknamed, wrote and shared her best high school remembrances. Are you ready? Here they, were. Here they are, crashing the prom. Crashing the prom. <laughs> She listed so-and-so's parties, someone's concussion as a best memory. <laughs> yeah, somebody's concussion. Now that, oh, it was yours. It was, oh, okay. <laughs> the concussion victim is in fact here. Autographs during intermission. 
Okay, and she also wrote about the Bruce Springsteen concert of 1984, born in the USA, right? Um, it is also, though, in this yearbook that we see the beginning of the lifelong spirit that her resume shows. It is here where she states as a senior in high school that her life goal is simply to take all of life's gambles. We are so glad you have taken those gambles, Dr. Weimer, and we are proud to honor you today for those, the outcomes. So congratulations and thank you for all as we honor you tonight. Thank you, Judy. Um, you really did your research. Uh, thanks for having me back in Alden. It looks a little different, but some of it looks familiar. It's good to be back. I'd like to thank Judy Kaczynski for nominating me, in addition to Mr. Ryan and all the Alden Administrators Association for giving me this award. I'd also like to thank Ray Trika for all her hard work on the video, and Colin Dubkowski, who was also her advisor on the project. I thought they did a great job. I'm very honored to be receiving this award, although I'm not really sure I'm worthy of it. Um, I think there's a lot of alumni Alden can be proud of. We're all a result of our experiences and the people who come into our lives. I was lucky to have parents who taught me the, you know, the benefit of a good work ethic. I was fortunate to have teachers in Alden all the way from kindergarten through high school that had an influence on me, each of them in a different way. Although some people thought I took a convoluted path in my career, I was fortunate I worked in engineering. I would have never met my husband of 30 years. And I probably wouldn't have had the confidence to go on and go to med school if it hadn't been for him. And then I would have never had the opportunity to meet all the patients that have touched my life in so many ways. People think physicians have an impact on their patients, but I'll let you in on a little secret. Patients have an effect on us as well. Every day, my patients help me to remember how fragile and short life is, what really matters, and how one small act of kindness can make someone feel. And we all need a little kindness. As I said, I've been very fortunate. Thank you, and go Bulldogs. Now, for the induction of our second honoree this evening, please turn your attention once again to the video screen. Passionate, without a doubt. And why? Passionate. His love for the environment and the animals in it and the different cultures in the world were just amazing. He would talk about the work he did and he would always talk about it positively. Always, I have an amazing job. I get to ride alongside a 75 foot whale and I know it's 75 feet because our boat is 72 feet. <laughs> Things like that. So yes, passionate. <laughs> Such as the reason that we're on the baseball field today. He loved baseball. He played baseball at school. And one summer, he took the summer off from work and decided I'm gonna hit up every Major League Baseball stadium and see a game. And he did. So in one summer, 30 games, 30 different stadiums. And he had said that trips that he took with the family when he was younger is what got that bug in him, that he wanted to go places and see things and meet people. During his time out, he traveled to 69 countries, and that didn't include the US. And he never just went through. It wasn't like a drive-through trip. Um, he spent time and got to know the people. When he was in Tahiti is when he went snorkeling for the first time and he said that that was when he knew he wanted to be a marine biologist. So I am wearing a shirt that has my brother's picture on it. It shows him in full gear on one of the vessels, uh, one of the crabbing vessels that he did. I have one of the shells that he brought home to me. Uh, he had kept this for his collection for a while and then decided to pass it on to me. 
And uh, he knows I love this kind of stuff. He was wonderful enough to bring home souvenirs all the time for everybody. And it was always things you don't find in a store. You get it from the gentleman that's sitting on the beach hand carving a piece of sandstone uh, that he brought home to me. One of the things he said was, if I wasn't going to be the smartest guy in the room, then I had to be the hardest working guy. So he read all the time, all the time. If he took a vacation, he took a stack of books with him because he didn't want to talk to anybody about anything that he didn't have the knowledge of. He had the same attitude about the end of his life that he did about the rest of his life. Very positive attitude and felt that he was very blessed in every way. And he said that his, his life was more than he could ever ask for. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, you know, Stephen Hawking had ALS. And he said, if I'm put in the same category as Lou Gehrig and Stephen Hawking, he was good to go. You know, it's funny because people will say, you know, you gave up so much to do that. And he's like, I didn't give up anything. That's what I wanted to do with my life. In many ways, he was a wanderer, but he could wander anywhere and be happy. Hello, my name is Nancy Arndt Simonelli, and I've been given the great honor of presenting and receiving this award in memory of my brother, Terry Arndt. On stage with me is my sister, Gail, who is acting as my emotional support system today. Also present, Terry's family down in front, his mom, Helen, wife, Tina, nephew, Alex, niece, Bethany, and her fiance, Ben, and their little ones, Bailey and Benny. A few years ago, my brother and I were talking about life and death. He said to me, I've lived an amazing life, and I couldn't agree more. Terry was a free spirit. He wanted to see the world, meet new people, and experience different cultures. So in the summer of 1971, right after graduating from Alden High School, age 17, he climbed in his car all by himself and took his first road trip. He headed to Canada and the East Coast. The following year, he headed to Munich, Germany for the Summer Olympics, and thus his adventures began. Terry visited 69 countries over the next 13 years. At some point during those travels, he realized that in order to make a living doing what he was passionate about, he was going to need a good education. So he headed back home to Alden in 1986 to settle down. He first attended the University of Buffalo because state residency means cheaper tuition. After getting basic requirements, he transferred to the University of Miami, which had the best marine sciences program. He graduated with a double degree in biology and marine biology, minoring in chemistry. He had been told that there weren't many job openings for marine biologists and that it didn't pay very much. He said, I want to study this field and I'll make it work. He was told that the work was hard and exhausting. He said, I have to experience it myself before coming to any judgment. Terry was determined, focused, and hardworking. Being educated and informed was extremely important to him. He took books everywhere he went, usually biographies, documentaries, history, even old college books. He said, if I wasn't the smartest guy in the room, I was going to have to work harder. He read the Bible more than once, and then he read the Quran just so he could be fair. Always the scientist. He took on a vegan lifestyle in 2011 just for the experiment. After graduating from college in 1992, Terry went to work for an environmental firm in Miami. Three years later, he read about a job opening in the newspaper, and he was hired over the phone on his resume alone. He was on his way to Alaska to work as a fisheries observer for consulting firms that placed individuals aboard vessels in the Alaskan seas. To give you an idea of the environment that he worked in, many of those vessels appeared on the Discovery Channel's The Deadliest Catch. When working aboard these vessels, he needed to send in reports, sometimes several times a week, 
and he was given a secret code to send along with those reports, saying whether his life was in danger due to the hostility that often came with the captain and the crew. He was there to make sure that everything was done legally and ethically, and not everyone agreed with that philosophy. He encountered deplorable conditions on some of those boats, but his attitude was, you don't appreciate the nice until you've dealt with the bad, so even the bad proves a purpose. Originally, he took a pay cut going from Miami to Alaska. He looked at it as an opportunity to expand his resume and experience Alaska with the ultimate goal of making connection for a permanent, better paying job. And this opportunity came along with LGL Alaskan Research. From 2007 to 2017, Terry worked as a marine mammal or protected species observer. They do environmental and coastal impact studies, data collection aboard vessels that do seismic activity and drilling, monitoring all actions involving marine mammals. Terry received his specialized training through the National Marine Fishery Service, a United States federal agency, and the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. He always volunteered to go first whenever learning something new, and he volunteered for every training class and certification available, from Hazwhopper to Firefighter, from Scuba to Hewitt. Hewitt, in case you don't know, is helicopter underwater egress training, because when your helicopter goes down in the water, you better know how to get out. So he was the first in his class to be certified, and he was the only one that got triple certified. One year after his start in Alaska, he was one of three uh, out of 14 in his class, still doing the job. All in all, he had 101 deployments in his maritime career. After beginning his work in Alaska, Terry's travels didn't end. The job allowed him to take time off to enjoy adventures closer to home. Whenever possible, he'd road trip. He was a true environmentalist. He would throw a sleeping bag, a tent, and some books in the car, and off he went. And he was extremely thorough. Going to Canada, he visited every province, every territory, every capital. When he went to Mexico, all 31 states. The US, every state, every capital, every national park, and every historic site of interest. One summer, he just drove 24,000 miles to hit up 30 states. Another one, he drove the entire Great Lakes system. And as a baseball lover, he went to every major league baseball game in every stadium. Terry continued to keep his hometown connections and visited whenever he could. He always drove so he could camp and stop and see whatever caught his interest, such as hiking to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. He loved to see whatever wildlife would come his way, whether it was wolves, moose, or bears. He even took a month off to attend his 25th reunion for Alden High. Terry journaled his entire adult life. He journaled all of his travels and all of his work. He stated, it's true what they say, the best part is not the destination, but the trip getting there. In 2017, at the age of 64, he was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. ALS is a motor neuron disease, has a life expectancy of two to five years. Both Lou Gehrig and Stephen Hawking passed from this disease, but my brother's response was, at least I'm in good company. Terry retired and took this opportunity to write his biography and titled it, The Extraordinary Adventures of an Ordinary Guy and he passed on January 12th, 2020. Terry was intelligent, courageous, and had the best sense of humor. He had a positive outlook about everything and always had a smile to give. He was passionate about life, the environment, cultural diversity, and all creatures. Gooding, getting a good education gave him the opportunities to live his life on his own terms. So here's hoping that someday, every one of you can say, I've lived an amazing life. On behalf of Terry and our family, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you let us slide right over just a little bit? I just got to get on the mic. Let me say this. At this time, I would like to present the Distinguished Alumni Award for Terry D. Arndt to Nancy, his sister, with all of his guests here tonight. Now for the induction of our third and final honoree this evening. Please turn your attention once again to the video screen.
so uh, this is uh, years ago, this was called Jock's Corner. Um, between classes and after school, we all hung out down here, all the guys who played football and basketball and track and stuff. So yeah, this was, uh, this was Jock's Corner. High school was a lot of fun. Uh, I ran track and played basketball. Um, so I was pretty involved in sports and stuff. Um, I had a whole bunch of friends. It was just a lot of fun. We made some really good friends here. Um, goes by quick. Uh, but yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun here. A friend of mine, Sean Eastland, who's an 86 grad also, was going in. Um, I, had, I didn't go into college right after high school, so I took uh, six or eight months off and decided to join the Navy with him. Uh, naval deployments were, uh, were, they can be adventurous. They were a little bit long. I did one six month deployment to the Persian Gulf from uh, December of 88 to May of 89. Um, saw a lot of the Middle East. Um, they, they can be fun as well, but they're, it's a job, it's your, it's your work, so you're working, but you do get a lot of time to go out and experience the world. Uh, the Navy Achievement Medal, the uh, Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, um, those were both for deployments to the Persian Gulf um, for that six month deployment. Uh, I'd have to say the Persian Gulf deployment, uh, we were, you know, we were technically escorting tankers in and around the, uh, the Persian Gulf, making sure they were safe, transiting full of oil. Uh, coming to and from Saudi Arabia. Uh, they offered me a job. I sent out a whole bunch of resumes and uh, they got back to me. Uh, and so in 97, I moved to Washington, D.C. and I uh, started my six and a half year career with the Secret Service. Uh, I, the, the best job I had was driver on the vice president's detail. I did that for uh, four and a half years for Mrs. Gore and Mrs. Cheney and also Vice President Gore and Vice President Cheney. I was on the White House grounds on 9-11. Uh, it was, uh, I can remember it being a beautiful early fall day, crisp, clear blue sky. Uh, and then it all just kind of happened in an instant and it was uh, definitely the most memorable day that I've ever had. I would like to recognize Jose Vasquez for putting that together. I definitely know he's not here as he is out getting ready for his football game. So good luck to the Bulldogs out there. At this time, to present Mr. Nicholas Smith for induction, please welcome to the podium his daughter, Miss Abby Smith. Um, my father is definitely somebody that I look up to, and I know many other people do as well. It's no surprise that he was chosen for this award based on the many things he's accomplished in his life. The first thing I would have to say would be winning most school spirited in this, as a senior superlative, which resulted in a picture of my father in a cheerleading uniform in the yearbook. When my dad's high school friends were asked to describe him, at the same time they said, oh gosh. They had your typical high school years with parties and getting in trouble, but he was also described as extremely loyal, a total sweetheart, and very funny. Um, he was also described as super easygoing, and they couldn't come up with one person who didn't like him. Um, some other highlights from my dad's life would be enlisting in the Navy, obtaining a chemistry degree from Buff State, a Secret Service Special Officer, protective support technician for Vice President Gore and Cheney, and protected them and their families during the 9-11 terrorist attacks, and now being a U.S. Customs and Border Protection agent, all while raising two daughters. My father has always been there for me throughout my almost 21 years of life, and I know my sister can say the same. Raising two daughters is not easy, especially my sister and I, but I think he did a pretty good job. As a dad, he definitely gives the best advice. One piece of advice that he always gives is was gonna don't get the job done, which comes from my grandfather, but it always pushes me to do it instead of just saying I was going to. 
I'm very honored to call Nick Smith my father as well as my mentor, hero, and best friend. He definitely deserves this award. Although I was a little shocked to find out you can still win this award having had started a food fight in the cafeteria in 1986. <laughs> And by the way, I still have to say this, it's still kind of called Jack's Corner. <laughs> I have to remember not to call it that when I'm using the radio that goes out over everything, yes. Um, please join me in welcoming Mr. Nick Smith to the podium to receive his award. Good evening. A year and a half ago, my father called and asked me for some information. My, host, my high school graduation year, my address, my email address, etc. He wouldn't tell me why or what for, just to trust him. He eventually told me he and my mother submitted my name and a short bio for consideration as a distinguished alumni from ACS. I laughed and said thank you for the nomination, not thinking I'd ever hear anything more. One morning this summer while I was at work, I saw a number a number come up on my cell phone. Not immediately recognizing it, I let it go to voicemail. A few minutes later, Assistant Principal McCowan was saying congratulations on my selection as a distinguished alumni. It has been fun recounting my journey from Alden High School to the US Navy, US Secret Service, and now Customs and Border Protection. I would like to thank the Alden Central School District, the Alden Administrators Association, Assistant Principal McCowan, my good friends with me tonight, Mr. Sean Eastland and Mr. Russ Hahn and his lovely wife, Joy, wife Joyce. My two daughters, Abby and Gina, my girlfriend Heather, and of course my mother and father who got this all started. Thank you and go Bulldogs. One small program note, again, the, uh, the awards that uh, have been presented tonight to the three inductees were crafted by our students here at Alden High School. We have a uh, student-run uh, manufacturing business known as Bulldog Manufacturing, and our students uh, produced those awards uh, for, for our three inductees uh, this evening. Thank you to uh, Bulldog Manufacturing. Congratulations once again to our honored guests this evening. After Mr. McCowan's closing remarks, we will move to the auditorium foyer for the unveiling of the Distinguished Alumni Wall for the class of 2021, where Dr. Weimer, Terry Arndt, and Nick Smith will forever be enshrined. It's like a whole process. You have to take your mask off and breathe for a second. Um, in closing, I would like to again congratulate the three candidates and their families on their induction into the Distinguished Alumni Fraternity. This is a very impressive group with an outstanding resume, one that has left a lasting legacy.
Additionally, I would also like to recognize the following for their contribution to this event. I know Mr. Ryan touched on it, but the Bulldog Manufacturing for their design and manufacturing of the awards, for the media production, for the video tributes, for the Atlas team, for their AV and technical support, for the high school main office, the ladies there, they've done a lot to help us with this, buildings and grounds, information technology, food service, and our district office. After the unveiling, you are all welcome to the cafeteria for a reception. Also, our candidates will be honorary captains for the coin toss of the football game, which means we need to be outside by 645. They are also being recognized at halftime of the game. Thank you all for coming, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the evening. Thank you. So if we could all go right up the stair, up the row here, and just right outside the door, we will do our unveiling.